Hello everyone. I am the reporter for this paper. My name is Ma Xiaoxuan. Now let me introduce our work in this paper. The paper name is Dropout Prediction in MOOCs, Combining Behavioral Sequence Characteristics. In the recent years, online educational platforms led by MOOC have developed rapidly around the world. It bringing great changes to the educational industry. MOOC aim to provide high quality, free and open courses for global learners. However, different from the traditional classroom education, MOOC suffers from a significant high dropout rate due to its online mode. In previous studies, researchers mostly use some well-designed features by handcraft. Such methods can be time-consuming and complicated. In this paper, we combine the unsupervised algorithm with the machine learning algorithm to solve the problem of dropout prediction in MOOC. We all know about MOOC. Massive open online courses, also called MOOC, are open courses designed to provide worldwide educational courses to a large number of learners. Most courses in MOOC are free and of high quality, which are usually recorded at great universities in various countries. Since 2010, MOOC have gradually come into the public view, and the rapid development of online learning platform led by MOOC has become a new popular trend. Compared with the traditional classroom learning, there are advantages that MOOC have, that is, high quality courses, no limitation of enrollment, flexibility for learning. Also, there are disadvantages about MOOC, such as high autonomy for participants, lack of supervision. Because of these two factors, MOOC suffers from a high dropout rate. Here I will introduce the data set we used in our experiment. We use the KDD 2015 as a, as a data set in our experiment. It's a public data set and it was supplied by the online platform Xuetang Zaixian and it has 39 courses. Each course lasts for one month. The data in this data set are three types of click data. They are problem, video, wiki, discussion, navigate, and page close. Each of these click data are the action of the participant. And there are more than 120,000 students participating. From the previous work, we can know that the dropout prediction problem is actually a sequence prediction problem. Our task is to take a sequence of the participant, which is generated by participant learning behavior in time order. And then we use a classification model to predict whether the participant will eventually drop out or not. This can be summarized as a time series binary classification problem. The second part is related work. Commonly, there are two ways to solve the dropout prediction problem. The first way is a traditional approach. Researchers use handcrafted feature to model and they need to construct complex features to get a good prediction rate. In this way, the deficiency is obvious, that is, time consuming for design feature by handcraft. The second way is using neural network. Using neural network can automatically extract features during training, and it's a hot spot in recent years. Researchers often use multi laser network or combination of different networks network model. The deficiency of this way is using neural network has poor interpretation. The third part 
is a proposed method in this paper. The method in this paper can separate to two part preprocessing and mining features. In the first part preprocessing, it can also be called sequence aggregation. Because the raw data in our data set is click stream data, we need to do preprocessing to get a behavioral sequence. First of all, we divide the whole data set into training data set and testing data set by 4 on 1. Therefore, 80% of the data is taken as training data set, and 20% of them is taken as testing data set. Then, we will do pre-processing on data set. Pre-processing includes two parts. The first part is carried out on the whole data set and we aggregate the behavioral records from raw data set into behavioral sequence and then each participant corresponds to one behavioral sequence. Then we generating the data set as one. The second part is only carried out on the training data set based on the time of the each behavioral record. The behavioral records are aggregated into different subsequences. Here we set a time interval as 30 minutes and each subsequence correspond to one learning process so that each participant will correspond to several subsequences. Then we generate the data set as two. This part we talk about mining features. We use a sequence pattern mining algorithm to find a frequent sequence pattern. The sequence pattern mining algorithm is using to find the most representative subsequences in original long sequences. This formula is used to calculate the support degree. The key step in the sequence pattern mining algorithm is calculating the support degree of candidate and select the candidate for the next round according to the calculation result. This is the first round of calculation. We start from the seven individual behavioral as the initial candidate. And after the calculation, we get four elements. They are all above 50%. And they will enter into the next round. In the second round of calculation, we start from the results in the previous round as the initial candidate. And after the calculation, we also get five elements in this round, and they will enter into the next round. They are 3337636 and 72. And in the third round, we get the five elements and uh, they will enter into a next round. So now we have the seven type of behavioral data as basic features and we can calculate two other basic features that is the, the total number of the participant learning process, the total time of participant learning. So Finally, we got nine basic features, and we denote them as feature set A. The five binomial sequence as feature set B, and the five trinomial sequences as feature set C. In this part, we talk about modeling and prediction. In the experiment above, we got three groups of progressive feature sets, which are A, A, and B. A, B, and C. The three feature sets are respectively used to fill, to build a model on the basis of the four classification algorithm. Here we use the four commonly used classification algorithm. They are logistic regression, decision tree, k-nearest neighbors, and native Bayes. 
So finally, we got uh, three feature set and uh, four classification algorithm. Then we can we can get uh, twelve models, and the performance on on the twelve models will be verified on the testing data set. Also, we need to introduce the evolution metrics we use to update the performance of our model. Because the data set using our experiment has obvious class imbalance, so the single indicator of accuracy was no longer sufficient to accurately measure the performance of the model. Therefore, we use four metrics together. They are precision, recall, F1 score and uh, error under the receiver operating characteristic curve, also called AUC indicator. And above them, AUC score is a main evolution matrix. We will use the AUC score as a evolution metric mainly. And this picture shows the result of 12 model from the experimental result. We can know that our our method in this paper has played a good effect on the performance improvement on the basis of four classification algorithm, especially for model based on decision tree and Kenyon's neighbors. Taking the experimental results of decision tree model as an example. The AUC score is 81.98% when only the basic feature set A is used. When feature set A and B are used, the AUC score is 82.41%. When all feature set A, B, and C are used, the AUC score is 82.54%. Similar, this trend of improvement appears on the other three models, which indicates that the advanced feature that we extract can improve the performance of the model. Finally, thanks for watching. That's all about our paper.